Thanks. Uh, I appreciate you having me here. I'm going to share my screen. And then I want to, although I cannot read the chat and present at the same time, I'm going to bring my chat up. I'm going to put a link in there, which I'll tell you about. Um, Everyone, my name is Cindy Camp. I work with the Described and Captioned Media Program. We are funded through the U.S. Department of Education, so everything I'm telling you about is absolutely free of charge. But to keep it free of charge, we have to collect a lot of data because we compete for a grant every five years. And that's what the QR code on this screen is for. If you want to take a picture of that with your phone, or if you want to use the link that's in the chat box, it's going to take you to a quick survey uh, that you can fill out. And that just gives me data to hopefully get our grant continued funded. Um, it will also allow you to give me your email address and I can send you some additional information. After this um, webinar as well, I will send a copy of handouts to um, those who are hosting and everyone who signed up for the webinar will get uh, handouts. So lots of ways for you to get additional information. So what is the Described and Captioned Media Program? We are a federally funded program and we're here to promote and provide equal access to communication and learning through described and captioned educational media. It is so important because videos are critical to education. I know most of us have grown up watching videos in the classroom, but with today's generation, it's even more important because they are so used to interactive games and being entertained. And trying to get young children today to sit and listen to lectures is crazy. They're not going to do it. They want the interactive component. And that's what videos bring. They inspire, they engage, they provide authentic learning opportunities. They take you on impossible field trips into the past, into history, around the world to learn about cultures that you'd never get to visit in person. The problem is, if those videos are not accessible, then there are large groups of children and adults who cannot access them. If videos don't have captions, an individual with hearing loss isn't going to be able to benefit from them. If they don't have audio description, individuals with vision loss can't access them. So that's where the Described and Captioned Media Program comes in. We take those educational videos that teachers are already using in the classroom, we add the captions, we add the audio description, and I'll tell you more about this later, but we're also adding American Sign Language as well now. We make those videos accessible so that all children in the classroom have equal access. And I've mentioned hearing and vision loss, but actually captions and audio description benefit children who have learning disabilities, children on the autism spectrum, and all children, because captions um, improve vocabulary, they improve reading skills, audio description, uh, enhance vocabulary. They really help all children learn better. So having the accessible version of a video playing in a classroom is really going to make learning better for the entire class. So who can access these videos? You can go to our website and fill out a short application. And anyone who works with children with disabilities birth through high school age qualifies for a free membership. So that's teachers, that's paraprofessionals, and that's family members. 
anybody who has contact with those children birth through high school. And that can be children who are an extended high school program because of their disability, whatever uh, age that is in your state, 21, 22, until they age out. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to work with adults because we're funded under IDEA, but up through high school until they leave that high school program. And so any of those professionals who work with those uh, children, and it doesn't even have to be in school. If uh, it's a social worker or a therapist who works with children, they qualify as well. So we want as many people using these videos to benefit children as much as possible. And if you're a teacher and you have only one student with a disability, you can still qualify. And then because of that one student, we don't want you changing your lesson plans. So you can use this with all of your students then. So we try and make it as easy as possible. You can access our videos over almost any internet enabled device laptop computers, desktops, tablets, smartphones. We do have an iOS app. Uh, we don't have one for Android, but I much prefer going to the website because it is so accessible and easy to use. And there's a lot of things on the website in addition to the videos. So if you use the iOS app on a tablet for students, that's great. But as an adult user, check out the website periodically because there are a lot of other things there you're going to want to see. One of the things I think it's really important when you're talking about accessibility is we don't want to forget quality. And a lot of people tend to think if you have access in one format or another, they don't think about terms of quality. And DCMP actually wrote the standards for quality captions. We have a document on our website called the captioning key. Anybody can access that free of charge. Just go to our website and look it up. And I put up here just a few very quick um, summary of some of the basics, but I think it's really important an example is going to get the point across a little bit better than just reading about it. So what I've done is I took the original Toy Story movie trailer and I sent it through YouTube's automatic captions and that's what you're going to see first. And then you're going to see it a second time with DCMP style captions. So pay attention and think about what's missing from those automatic captions and look at this through the lens of a child who may be an emerging reader and see what they would get out of each style of captions. Sergeant gets served. Establish a recon post downstairs. Code red. Repeat, we are code red. Recon plan. Charlie, execute move. It's a Walt Disney Pictures presents a totally new animated motion picture event. Star Command, come in. Do you read me the story of two toys? There seems to be no sight of intelligent life anywhere. Hello, Chloe. I'm headed for a showdown. My name is Woody. This is my spot. I am Buzz Lightyear. I come and be you are a child plaything. You are a sad, strange little man and playing by their own rules. Draw me again. I don't like confrontation by Vulcan alien where you're mocking me, aren't you? You music. Oh, impressive wingspan. Very good. Oh, what? Wow. Can't fly. Yes, I can. Can't. Can. Can't. 
can. This holiday season, the adventure takes off when toys come to life. Oh, and Finity and Beyond Toy Story. Look, Dad. Applause. Music. <laughs> Sergeant? Yes, sir. Establish your recon post downstairs. Code red, repeat. We are code red. Recon plan, Charlie. Execute. Move, 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 move. It's a... It's a big one. Walt Disney Pictures presents a totally new animated motion picture event. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? The story of two toys. Ooh, there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yeah. Ah! Headed for a showdown. My name is Woody. This is my spot. Ah! I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. You are a child's plaything. You are a sad, strange little man. And playing by their own rules. Draw. Fuck me again. I don't like confrontations. Buzz, look at alien. Where? You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> oh, impressive wingspan. Very good. <laughs> oh, what? What? You can't fly. Yes, I can. You can't. Can. Can't. 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 This holiday season, the adventure takes off when toys come to life. To infinity and beyond. Toy Story. Look out! So you notice a big difference between these two styles of captions. Um, the automatic captions do not have speaker identification. You don't know when the speaker changes. It does not have punctuation. So you don't know when a sentence begins or ends. It's a stream of words and they're not always the correct words. So really having automatic captions can be more detrimental than no captions at all. And that's the point we really want to get across is if it's not high quality access, it can be worse than no access. Again, DCMP has standards for audio description as well. You can find those on our website and it's called the description key. This again is just a summary of some of the key points. Um, I will say that my background was in working with deaf and hard of hearing students. And so I knew captions really well and I thought that they were challenging until I learned about audio description and wow, it is an art form trying to come up with the best way to describe in as succinct a fashion as possible using vocabulary that's age appropriate. It's amazing. The script writers, um, what they have to do to get really good audio description. And I find that maybe not everyone's heard audio description. Uh, it's probably 15 to 20 years behind where captioning is. Everybody's seeing captions on TV. We're used to seeing it when we go into restaurants. But audio description, we don't hear very often. And so I wanted to give you a chance to listen to that. One of the things that companies will do to try and cut cost is use AI voices for audio description. DCMP does not do that. We always use voice actors, especially for educational videos. We want students to have the same enjoyable experience that their peers do. We don't want them to have to listen to a robotic voice because we want the educational video to be as entertaining to them as it is to their sighted peers. So let's watch a clip from To Kill a Mockingbird. Morning, Jim, Dill, and Scout come out of the side door. Hey, Jim, I bet you a great ghost against two-time Swiss. 
You wouldn't go any farther than Bill Radley skate. Why? Jim waves him off and walks out into his yard. Scared so anxious. I ain't scared. I go past Bill Radley's house nearly every day of my life. How is your running? You hush up, Scout. Jim shoves her into a bush. The boys take off. Scout follows as Jim rolls a big tire into the street. Me first, me first, me first. You gotta let Dale be first. No, me, me, me. I'll let her be first. All right, get in. Scout curls herself into the rim of the tire, bracing her feet and hands. You ready? Mm-hmm. Let her go. Jim rolls the tire with Scout inside, building up speed. With a final push, the tire and Scout roll down the street. The boys gape as it heads toward the Radley house. Scout! She rolls past the fence and crashes into the broken porch steps. Scout, get away from there! Scout, come on! Jim yells from the street. Scout, don't just lie there, get up! Sitting on So you get an idea of what audio description is. It's critical for students who are blind or low vision so that they have it, can experience all of the visual aspects of a video as well. And while captioning is coming along and there are some educational videos that are captioned now, probably less than 10% of educational videos are audio described. So that one is still very lacking. Let me show you a little bit of what you'll find on the DCMP site. This is a typical player page. You see the video player to the left and then to the right, there's going to be a paragraph that summarizes what the video is about. So you can decide if you would like to watch it. Below that, topics and subtopics suggested grade level, standards, which I'll come back to, a release year, producer, and you can see other videos from that producer. And if it's part of a series, you'll see a link to a series page. The standards are important because we now link all videos in our collection to Common Core and state standards. This makes it really easy for teachers to document what standards a video teaches or to search for videos that teach a specific standard. It recognizes what state you're from. I live in Alabama, so this tells me this video links to 35 Alabama state standards. When I click on that, it takes me to a page where I can filter that if I want to look for what standards for another state or search by grade level. Below the video, it has language and accessibility. We do have quite a few videos in uh, Spanish as well as English, which is very helpful if you work with students with disabilities who, have, um, who are English as a second language. Cinema mode is, uh, makes the video full screen report a problem, we'll send information to our technical support. Transcript is a great teaching tool. When you click on that, you can choose captions and description transcript, which makes the videos accessible to students who are deaf blind. You can also use the transcript feature to search through the video. You can type in a phrase or a word, and it will jump to that point in the video where that word or phrase shows up. So if you were in a history video and you wanted to find uh, a specific part, uh, perhaps it's a Civil War video and you want a specific battle in the Civil War, you can jump to that part of the video and watch just about that battle. You can, we also use uh, player-based accessibility now, which means it, you can customize the viewing experience to help your students. You can slow down or speed up the video. 
This is really helpful if you have students who may need a little more processing time, perhaps to read the captions or to watch the video and take in the captions at the same time. And even at half time or 75%, it does not distort the audio very minimally. You will hardly even notice it, but it gives students a little extra time to process everything. If you have a video that is both English and Spanish, you can mix and match, which helps those um, English language learners uh, to perhaps have the audio in Spanish and the captions in English. You can customize how the captions look. So if you have someone who has both vision and hearing loss, you can uh, enlarge the font, change the font, change the colors, the background colors, really customize it to uh, for their individual needs. And as I said earlier, we're now adding American Sign Language. We have uh, over 700 videos that we've added ASL to so far. And as production is going along, we're adding about 10 new videos with ASL per week now. We also allow you to embed videos into an LMS or website. We allow you to create clips and lessons, pulling clips from one or more video, adding in questions. Uh, this is just a real quick example I did. I pulled a clip from a video about the Trojan War. I put a question in there. I found an online document, a PDF of the timeline of the Trojan War. And so then students can go through and do that as a homework assignment or remote learning. To do the embedded video and both the clips and lessons, you set up student accounts. We do not allow anyone under 18 to have their own account because we have sensitive topics such as sex education, drug and substance abuse, uh, mental health issues. We wouldn't want little children to learn find on their own. So the adult monitors the student and allow gives them access to the videos. And we do not collect any student information. The teacher or parent can put in student one, two, three. They don't even have to put in real names. It's totally up to you as that adult how you set up the student accounts, but um, you put in a name or a fictitious name and assign them usernames and passwords. Then you decide what grade levels and our individual videos they're allowed to see. And they will never have anything pop up that you did not give them access to. Totally safe. We have all the academics, but we also have social emotional. We have self-advocacy. We have transition videos. Anything you would want to use with a student, we're going to have a video on that topic. We also have training videos for teachers and parents as well. Uh, we have an accessible television portal, which has some very fun educational topics that uh, students will enjoy watching. We have some transition curriculum specifically for deaf, hard of hearing, blind, low vision. We have a sight reading Braille module. If you've ever been interested in learning Braille, this is freely available to everyone. Even if you didn't qualify to be able to watch all of the videos, you can still learn to sight read Braille under our e-learner account, which anyone can sign up for. We have some trainings for teachers to earn CEUs, uh, just some more modules that we have. And, um, most of our videos come with additional resources, so teachers may not even have to develop their own lesson plan. Um, we send out a monthly newsletter that um, we're not going to 
sends you tons of emails. You get the one monthly newsletter that's going to tell you what's new. Um, and we do have about 300 to 500 hours of new content every year. So you'll, you'll see that. Um, and you'll see recommended videos for current events and holidays. And I want to leave just a few minutes for questions. I popped up the QR code again. And for anybody who may have come in again, I'm going to put the uh, link for that QR code in the chat. And so do you have any questions? We've got over 13,000 videos in our collection as is. Think of it as an accessible educational Netflix. You just go online and start streaming. And I'm hoping that you'll go and sign up for an account. Please do turn on your mics, ask questions. Yes, for sure, Cindy, thank you. That was really excellent. I, I'm writing notes frantically over here about how great this is. So thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so awesome, I can't wait to dive into it. Um, questions, anyone, please feel free. And like Naomi said, feel free to turn your mics on. Um, we're a good sized group. If you want to just ask your question out loud with your mic, that's fine. If you want to turn your camera on, that's great too. Don't take any of it. Please feel free. Uh, you've got my email there. Um, feel free to contact me. I am available to do trainings for schools, for teacher groups, for parent groups. Um, we want to make sure that uh, all students have access to these resources. Cindy, is there, a, is there um, a process if I'm a member and I don't see material I need? Is there a request process where I can say to you all, can you please make something in this area? There is. Just scroll to the bottom of uh, any page on our website, and there's a link that says recommend media. And so you can recommend a specific title or a category if you don't see something on that topic. Now, I will warn you, it's not always a quick process. We that was my next question, by the way. <laughs> we, we do have to contact the producer. We negotiate sure. with them for the rights. Sometimes they're very willing and, you know, it may be three months. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it may be a year and some of them may flat out say no we won't work with you. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm really interested, Cindy, when you mentioned the um, the kind of the best practices documents that you have for captioning and description. Those are the first things I'm going to go search for on the website when we're done. So those sound really great. Yeah, and in the handout, I'll have the links, the URLs, so you can get to those directly. So. Awesome. Awesome. And, and if you came in later, uh, what we'll what we'll do after the webinar, Cindy will send over to us the uh, links to the handout, and then we will forward it to you all um, who are here and anybody who registered. Um, we'll send you the link to the recording once we put it up online, and we'll send you the link to the handouts as well. You have everything you need. So we're getting close to the bottom of the hour here. Anyone last call? Oh, there you go. Naomi has a question. Is it in the works for being available to college students? We would love to make it available to college students. And it used to be mm -hmm. uh, until 2006 when the feds um, changed our parameters. Uh, so yeah, talk to your congressman and say, yes, we want DCMP for college again. Any other questions from people in the group? Sydney, thank you so much for sharing this with us. This was wonderful. Like, like we said to you before we started and we said to people in the beginning, our group internally was very excited about this session. We were talking about it yesterday in a meeting. So this was this was great. We appreciate your time, Cindy, and sharing this with us. Uh, everybody who joined us, thank you for joining us. And uh, we will forward to you the link to the recording as well as the handout. We appreciate your time today, everybody. Thank you so much. Cindy, thank you again. Thank you.